sat yet love him. His name was King Sarijan. King Sarijan had a younger brother, Satsaman, who ruled in the distant lands of Samarkand. Both kings ruled for many years their domains with reason and sagacity. King Sarijal missed his younger brother. One day, he decided to send a vizier with an invitation to Satsaman to come for a stay at his rich kingdom. Satsaman happily accepted and straight away prepared his tents, mules, chests, servants, and set out on a journey to his brother's domain. Traveling without ceasing, he arrived at the kingdom of King Sarijar, who met him, received him, and greeted him, showing him his joy at his arrival. Sarijar decorated the city and began to organize a great hunt to celebrate the arrival of his younger brother. This 
were known for three years. People fled with their daughters, so that not a single girl was left in the kingdom. One day, the king commanded his vizier to bring him another young woman. The vizier went out, but found none. He came back home fragment, fearing the anger of the king. Vizier had two daughters. The younger one was named Dunjasad, and the elder Shiherzad. Sherzad had read books, histories, and biographies of ancient kings. She had collected a thousand volumes concerning the history of extinct people, kings, and poets. Sherzad volunteered to come to the court of King Sarija. She insisted her father let her because she had a plan. If it were well, she would succeed, freeing all the young women of the kingdom from suffering and persecution. Finally, her father led her aside to the king. That night, when the king tried to possess her, she cried out, telling him that she had a little sister and she would like to say goodbye to her before she died. The king called her. When she arrived, both sisters hugged each other, and Dunjasad sat down at the foot of the bed. After the king took Shiherazad's virginity, the younger sister said, For God's sake, my sister, tell us a tale to distract us from our insomnia tonight. I would love to, if the king permits it. When the king heard these words, as he was also sleepless, he was glad and ready to listen to the story. appeared in the river, containing the corpse of a dead woman. The Caliph Al Rashid's face filled with tears on receiving such news, because he saw that in his kingdom people were murdered with impunity. Jafar to the palace and ordered him to find the assassin. He gave him a three days party and if he failed to find the woman's murder, he would execute him. he would know 
who had killed this young woman and where to look for him. Jafar went to his house and for three days he was supposed to get the murder. On the fourth day, the Caliph called him and Jafar reported that he had found Nawa. Then the Caliph was furious and ordered Jafar to be crucified at the palace gate, telling the proclaimers to announce it all over the city. When the day of the execution arrived, and while the people were in tears, suddenly a handsome and well-behaved young man pushed his way rapidly through the crowd, and arriving between the hands of Jafar, confessed his guilt of the murder. And with this, the Caliph asked why he had done such a murder. The young man told his story. Oh, please of the believers, this young woman was my wife. I married her and Allah has given me three sons. She always loved me and served me. But at the beginning of this month, she fell seriously ill. One day, she told me that she wanted to eat an apple that this apple will help her to recover faster. I immediately ran into the street to buy the apple and went to all the fruit shops one by one without finding any. Finally, I found a gardener. He told me that I could only find them in the distant city of Basra. So I went all the way and spent a whole fortnight, night and day, to go to Asra. And luckily, I returned to my wife with three apples, both for three dinars. I offered them to my wife, but when she saw them, she didn't show any sign of joy, putting them aside. During my absence, my wife had fallen seriously ill again. She remained ill for another 10 days, during which I didn't leave her side for a moment. But thanks to Allah, she recovered her health, and then I was able to return to work in my shop. One afternoon, I saw a black man with an apple, and I couldn't help asking him where he got it. He told me that his lover gave it to him, that her stupid husband made a fortnight's journey and paid a fortune just to bring her three apples. When I heard such words, my eyes saw the world go dark. Having lost my mind, I closed the shop and went back to my house. Then I noticed that an apple was missing. Then I rushed over to my wife, murdered her, and got rid of her. When I returned home, I saw my eldest son crying. I was sure he hadn't heard yet about his mother's death. So I asked him what was the cause of his crying. He told me, that he had taken one of the apples to show it to his friends, when a black man appeared and asked him where he had got it from. It belongs to my father. He went and brought three apples to my mother for three dinars, because she is really ill. Then, the black man pushed him away and stole it. When I heard these words from my son, I realized that the black man had lied and therefore I had killed my wife unjustly. Then, 
Tarif die für mich ist. Ich klein. By Allah, I should kill this disloyal murder. And turning to Jafar, he told him that he had another three days to find the black man. And if he didn't find him, he would execute him instead. went out crying and wondering where he could find him. He arrived at his house and again he stood there in pain because one more time he was supposed to get the murder in three days.
didn't hear her moan in a hidden place. I approached her as usual. She had just taken a bath in the hammer, and she looked beautiful and perfumed. And her face, it looked like the moon on its 14th night. She saw me, she ran to me, and we started playing and doing all sorts of things. These games brought us closer together, and the girl began to come closer until we kissed. Oh my king! 
him. These two fantastic stories I have just told you are nothing in compared to the next. The curious legend of the ghost. At that very moment, as she was going to start with her new narration, she resigned, so the morning appeared, and again, quietly fell silent. On the third night, Sierrezad continued with the tale of the ghost. of a great city in India had three daughters. They were perfect in every way, from the typhoon to the other. Once they were pubescent, their father wanted to find them a husband capable of steaming them. To his joy, the king announced that the three daughters were on marriageable age. They decided that fate would choose their husbands throwing a handkerchief over the crowd of admirers, and it would fall on the chosen one. The eldest daughter appeared at the window and threw the handkerchief over her young mirror, bright and beautiful. Then the second one threw it as well, and it fell over a young prince, as beautiful and charming as the first one. The third daughter did the same, but it landed on the horns of a billy goat. Given the unexpected choice of fate, the Sultan considered the experience known and ordered to be repeated. The scarf fell three times on the same goat. Finally, after a great deal of anger, the Sultan gave his approval to such an extraordinary marriage, as fate had desired. So they decided to celebrate the marriage of the three daughters. When the wedding night arrived, the three of them were dressed, adorned and led to the bridal chapel. The first two sisters happily consummated the marriage. For the third one, the god swat his skin and became the most beautiful young man. He was a very rich prince that loved her for a long time, but didn't manage yet to reach her.
when she saw that, she went to get her husband, the Sultan. And they were both stunned by this scene, unable to believe what the daughter had done. Consummated the marriage with a goat. Sometime later, the king organized a great competition at the palace. He invited all the dignitaries and also the two husbands of his eldest daughters. Of course, he didn't invite the goat. During the day, the most distinguished were the two husbands, until a man arrived. With his skills, he became the hero of the day, greeting the king and his family who were at the windows of the palace. her husband. She didn't reveal it, but she threw a rose from her hair. Seeing this behavior, the sultan was very upset. On the second day, the same thing happened. And on the third one, when the winner was again this handsome young man, the youngest daughter threw another, another beautiful flower at him. When everyone saw this, the sultan's anger and indignation was so big that he wanted to kill her. Seeing death at hand, the friendly daughter told the truth to her family. At that moment, the house of prince disappeared. For a long time, she was devastated and hopeless that her husband would never return. Years later, by chance, the princess made an old pilgrim. He told her that one day, while she was bathing in the river, he followed some moves to an underground palace. Hidden inside the palace, he discovered that there lived 40 million goats, who, when they gathered together, became 40 beautiful young men being their leader, the most beautiful one. What they all had in common was that they were crying for a princess whom they had never seen again. Anyhow, the old man managed to escape from the palace. For a long time, he cried and tried to convince people of what he had seen. But everyone thought he was crazy. When the princess heard the story, he asked the old man to show her the location of the underground palace.
after some time spent in their delights, the lovers decided to return to the palace. Finally, they lived happily forever. Between night and night, story and story, a thousand and white nights passed. Sweetness. 